Uh, here we go. So hello hey guys. guys. Uh, we are back, Girish and uh, myself. Ish, uh, we are online again. It's 1200 hours Mauritian time. We are continuing with the second part of our virtual developers conference uh, uh, day three and also the last day of the conference. Uh, our next speaker is already with us, but please excuse us for the video. We are having some issues, uh, but rest assured that the presentation is going to be fine, already tested. Girish, I leave it to you now. Okay, so our next speaker is Sudesh Nabapu. She's a software developer at Moravel. The presentation is going to be a multi-tenant application with a serverless solution. So maybe Sudesh, um, could you tell us a bit more about you? Uh, so, hello everyone, and uh, thank you all those who are watching my session right now in Mauritius, uh, especially during lunchtime. So, um, I'm Sudesh now, so I work at Moriba. It's been three years I've been working at Moriba. So, uh, during those years, I uh, have developed applications, uh, mostly with uh, AWS services, so either serverless or not. So, um, Today, I will share with you how to build a multi-tenant application using a serverless solution. And uh, so firstly, we will go through multi-tenancy and then later on uh, serverless. So, um, okay. Um, multi-tenancy. Uh, before understanding multi-tenancy, we need to know that we have two types of application, okay? So it can be a single tenant application or it can be a multi-tenant application. Um, to have a better idea about that, uh, let's say you have to build an application, okay? A web application for a specific customer. And uh, let's say that customer is Mtel. So normally we are their customers, but in this scenario, let's say Mtel is our customer and we are building a web application for them so that they can show their future internet packages. Okay. And um, um, we have got a request to build an application for them, which resemble the following, okay, the traditional one. So we might be having the customer who is going to um, sign into the web application using an authentication service, okay, and after successful authentication, the, um, the user is going to access an API, a security API, which is uh, later going to interact with a database. And in this, in this uh, database, um, we have uh, security information concerning the specific uh, customer. So everything is uh, fine, uh, everything so far everything is good. So this is how a single tenant application look, looks like, okay? We have a specific uh, tenant which is accessing the application. So, uh, and then later on, you're requested to build the same application for another customer. And let's say that customer is mighty, okay? They are two concurrent, which will be using your web application. So questions you might ask yourself is how to adapt your web application to serve multi-tenants. So it's obvious that you won't create two identical web applications. So there are several questions that you might ask yourself is that uh, will you be using the same authentication service? And what if one tenant that is Mtel wants to have a different password policy and the other tenant that is mighty want to have another different policy. And if using different instances is efficient and if yes, and how to adapt that to your application. Or uh, will you be using the same database but you don't want data to be compromised? Or you want a separate database but worry about costs? So, all of these questions you might uh, uh, consider it before uh, in, um, adapting that to your applications. So, um, in this scenario, this is where the multi tenant approach comes into picture. So, um, whenever you're building an application that is a multi tenant uh, uh, architecture, there are three approaches that you need to know. So in short, uh, the multi-tenant application, it is an application that might, that can serve multi, multi, multiple uh, customers, that is multiple tenants. So uh, there are three approaches that you need to know before uh, moving forward to a multi-tenant uh, application. So um, the multi-tenant approach that we have is the separate databases, or we can have the same database but separate tables, or having the same databases or the same 
tables. Of course, uh, each one has their own pros and cons. For example, this, so in the separate databases, we'll be having a database per tenant, that is per customer. So one thing, one good, one good thing is that uh, the data of the tenant is completely isolated to other tenants, which means we have simple segmentation of data. But one uh, cons is that we might be, uh, we might end up managing many databases, so we should be considering the cost of managing separate databases. And the next approach we, uh, we can have is using the same databases but having separate tables. Um, so we might be having one or multiple uh, databases per tenant. And uh, of course, uh, one good thing about that is uh, using the same table, we're going to have the same schema for all clients, for all tenants, but it might be uh, complex in managing separate schemas um, in the future. And another approach we, we can have is using the same database, but uh, also the same tables. So having uh, using the same database and same tables, uh, we you can see here we have one table, but we have uh, for each row we need to sp specify the tenant. So for each row, the tenant is going to own that row. And for this um, uh, approach, uh, one good one good thing is that uh, we we might be saving cost, but it might be more complex uh, for segmenting the data for each tenant. Also, the security risk might be higher. Um, so um, before moving to the next part of this presentation, it is good to know that uh, multi-tenant architectures is quite popular, especially for such application. So whether single tenant or multi-tenant, um, each one has their own pros and cons, of course, but it really depends on your application, whether to adapt the multi-tenant or the single tenant application. Um, so now we'll be moving to the serverless part. Um, uh, so uh, serverless, whenever we hear the word serverless, we, uh, it's, uh, um, um, how we say, um, serverless means we do not have to think about servers, okay? So we can build our application by only focusing on the core part of the application and not worrying about uh, uh, OS maintenance, capacity provision, uh, provisioning, etc. So um, for this uh, session, we'll be using the AWS Serverless platform. So the AWS Serverless platform, uh, I've been working for, uh, with uh, uh, Amazon Web Services for the past three years. So it provides a range of fully managed services that you can use to, to build and run serverless application. And for that, um, um, uh, Amazon Web Services uh, provides a range of services that we're going to look forward. So in terms of storage, we have S3, that is a simple storage service, which is like a file system. So you can store objects and one fun fact is that you can even use simple storage service to host websites. And the second service is uh, the authentication service. So Amazon came um, with a service called Amazon Cognito. So Amazon Cognito consists of a consists of user pool. So it is just like a user directory where you have all your users, and we use that to perform authentication. And it also supports social identity providers such as uh, Facebook, etc. And uh, moving on to the API, so we have. AWS API Gateway, which is totally managed by AWS. So you can create your REST API, HTTP API, WebSocket API, etc. We're going to see all those services in details uh, during the demo that I'm going to show you. Um, and then in terms of compute, there's a service known as uh, Lambda. So it lets you run code without, thing, uh, without managing any servers. So one fun fact is that you can choose from a, ring, from a range of languages, such as Python, Java, Node.js to um, for the to represent the logic of your code, and then in terms of database, we have the DynamoDB that is a it is a NoSQL database in Amazon Web Services. So we can combine all those services to uh, create in the end a multi-tenant architecture. And uh, for that, um, our application will be uh, like this. So we will be having our application which we can host uh, in NS3. For the authentication service, we can uh, use AWS Cognito. 
for authentication purposes. And then after um, successful authentication, we can uh, we will use uh, accessing web API, which is API Gateway, which is also uh, a service of Amazon, which is completely managed by AWS. And then for the compute, we'll be using the AWS Lambda, which will interact with the database, which is the uh, DynamoDB. Um, so, um, of course, there is uh, other serverless services provided by AWS, but uh, these are the five ones which we'll be using to develop a multi-tenant architecture. And uh, moving on, uh, before, uh, before moving to the to the demo, there is uh, one service which is like the core service to um, to realize any serverless application, which is known as the IAM, which is the Identity Access Management. So, um, Identity Access Management it uh, manages access to resources uh, by defining who is allowed to do what and what is allowed to do what. For example, me, I'm a user. Uh, what services I have access to. So AWS IAM is going to uh, tell me, uh, no, uh, it's going to um, uh, access, uh, provide access to a specific user to, uh, to, to define uh, which services the user has access to. And also what is allowed to do what, which means um, what particular service in, in uh, AWS is allowed to do what to other services. For example, uh, if you look at this uh, schema, so here the Lambda uh, is going to interact with the DynamoDB. So hence, the Lambda needs to have a specific IAM role or policies to access the DynamoDB. Um, if we um, want to have a clear, uh, a clear view about that, let's have a look about this example. If we look um, uh, to this address IAM policy, we can read that, we can say that uh, uh, whatever service has this uh, AM role can perform a query, update, or delete to this specific table. That is the tenant A table. Um, which means that a service having this role uh, can only do uh, query update or delete item on this table. And this might be useful if we are using the uh, same database but different tables approach in the multi-tenant architecture. And then we, if we look at the uh, other address IAM uh, role, we can see here it is a bit different, which means that um, a service having this role can do a query update or delete to that specific to that specific table. But um, where the primary key contains this specific tenant ID. So it means that um, um, in a table, we are going to have uh, specific rows, and this specific rows, we are going to have this uh, tenant ID. And uh, only a service um, having this role will be able to. Uh, to access that specific row. We're going to come back uh, to that when I I'm, when I'm, will be doing the demo. And this approach, uh, it is useful when we are doing the same database and the same table approach. So when we are doing the multi architecture in AWS US, we really need to master the IAM uh, uh, service of Amazon Web Services. So um, we'll get back to those services in details. I'm going to show you um, those services um, individually. So I'm going to get back to the demo. So first of all, we have seen the um, S3. So if we go to S3, Okay, let me look at the test bucket. So as I said that uh, S3, it is like a file system where you can store objects and it can be even be used to host, to host uh, websites. So if we go to the properties part, we can see that uh, there are several properties that it provides such as versioning and we even have the static website hosting, which is quite easy for us to host a website. We just have to um, specify as index document and we can easily host a static website using S3. And uh, if we look at uh, another service, which is the uh, uh, AWS Cognito, 
in, in, in Amazon Web Store, we have uh, two sub-services, which is the user pool and the identity pools. So the user pool is used for um, authentication purposes, and the identity pools is used so is used in such a way that so let's say we have performed an authentication and a successful uh, authentication, and uh, in return we receive tokens and. We can exchange those tokens with the identity pool, which will later let us access other services of Amazon. And uh, for this uh, demo, we won't be uh, accessing uh, the services of Amazon directly from our application. We'll be using the user pools. So um, user pools, like I said, they are just like a user directory. So here I have two user pool for for two tenants, that is a tenant A and a tenant B. So in user pools, what we do, we are going to define the attributes of, of um, our authentication system. That is, um, uh, what, uh, what attribute are we going to use to perform login? We can define our specific password policy. So as we can see here, the fact we have two tenants, we can, um, associate uh, different password policies to each tenant. And one good thing is that everything is totally managed by Amazon Web Services. Uh, we don't have to manage any capacity provisioning, um, things like that. So if ever we have other tenants, we just need to create a tenant for that specific customer. And um, to, to view our next services, which is the API Gateway. So the API Gateway also, it is a managed service by Amazon Web Services, which is serverless. Uh, we can create, um, if we click on Create API, so we can create HTTP API, WebSocket API, or Universe API. Uh, here you can see that I have created a multi-tenant API, where you're going to define your endpoints, where you define your endpoints. And uh, there's something called the authorizers, which is very important, which is used to secure your API. Uh, if you see here, we have an authorizer, which is another authorizer. So let's say we have um, we have created our user pools. We um, we have access to our, uh, we have access to our web application. We have performed an authentication, and then we're going to access our API. So we can create an authorizer. Uh, by uh, specifying the specific cogito which was used to perform the authentication and assign that to our API, which means each time we are accessing our API, um, uh, that token is being verified by cogito and everything is done by cogito itself. We don't have to manage anything. And uh, this is useful if we are using a single tenant approach. So we can use a cognito one. But if we are using um, the multi-tenant approach, which means we are using several cognito user pools, so here we might be uh, creating our own custom authorizer. So I have created a, a custom um, a multi tenant authorizer by using Lambda, which I'm going to show you uh, later on. So I have uh, created a custom authorizer using Lambda, and this Lambda is going to secure my API. So each time I'm accessing my API, uh, the Lambda authorizer is being called to, um, to verify our token. And then the um, next survey that we have seen is the compute one, okay, which is the Lambda. So Lambda uh, is very interesting because uh, you just need to put your code there. Uh, if you have a look at this, uh, so you just need to put your code there, and that's all. Everything is managed by AWS. Um, one uh, thing that I've mentioned is that, uh, okay, we, we can use several languages, such as uh, Python, you can use Java, you can use uh, Node.js, etc. So this is Lambda. And uh, other services that I've mentioned is a DynamoDB. So DynamoDB is... Um, I'm going to show you that maybe. So for this approach, we'll be using the same uh, database, same table approach. Um, where you can see here, this is uh, the DynamoDB. 
so by using the same database, same table approach, as you can see here, we have used uh, the tenant ID. So the tenant ID is the user pool ID, which is the user pool ID here. Uh, so we have uh, specified the tenant ID on each row, which means the tenant owns this specific row. Okay, um, this is um, the DynamoDB part. Um, now we will move back to IAM. So um, IAM, uh, I'm going to show you how it looks like. So IAM. So uh, for the IAM part, we have to create a specific IAM role for a specific tenant. Uh, like you see here, we have two tenants. That is uh, um, the tenant A, which uh, with this specific tenant ID. I have an IAM role for this user, for this uh, tenant. So as you can see here, um, if you can see the book, I'm going to click on you. Okay. As you can see here, that specific tenant uh, can can uh, uh, do a get item or query on that specific table, which is uh, secure tenant data. And uh, on that secure tenant data, it can access only the leading keys, which have the uh, this value, which means um, the tenant uh, users in this tenant can access only those rows. They will never be able to access the rows of other tenants. And uh, if you see, um, for uh, for the uh, for the other tenant, the role is the same. It just that um, he also uh, uses in the tenant B. Okay, um, users in the tenant B can only access uh, um, the table secure tenant data, but with leading, leading keys, uh, this value, which is here. So um, to, to use all the services together, um, I have developed uh, an Angular application where we'll be using the cognitive uh, Amazon Cognito for authentication and the API gateway, which will interact with the Lambda, and the Lambda is going to interact with the um, Amazon DynamoDB. So I have my multi tenant application here. This is my multi tenant application. And you can see here for my uh, in my API gateway, I have uh, uh, an endpoint here, which is going to um, retrieve a uh, specific tenant details, that is the tenant details for tenant A and all the, uh, the, uh, the cognitive details for tenant B. So I'm going to perform an authentication of uh, using uh, the tenant A. So this is tenant A. I'll be using my user. As you can see here, I have user. I have one user here, which is uh, myself. So um, I am logging uh, using the tenant A user pool. I perform a login and uh, here I am logged in and I can see only information that is tenant A information. As we can see here in the DynamoDB, we have those three um, details. And um, I'm going to do the same for tenant B. Uh, if you see here for the tenant B, I have one user, I have only one user here with my other email. Um,
So as you can see here, I have logged in using the tenant B and receiving only information about tenant B. And if you see, um, we get back to the code here. Um, I have my Angular application, which is accessing uh, the API gateway here. This one, the secured one. And if we have a look at the Lambda, okay, it is over here. So I have only one Lambda, which is bringing information for the for the different tenant, that is the tenant A and the tenant B. And uh, it is the same Lambda, which is where I'm performing a get uh, a query here using the tenant ID, which I am uh, receiving from the token of the user. So um, in the end, I have only one API gateway, which is being used by both tenants, one Lambda only, which is being used by both tenants again, and one DynamoDB, one table, which is also being used by both tenants. So in the end, I don't have to manage anything. Everything is managed uh, on behalf of uh, Amazon Web Services. So if ever in the future I have other tenants, all I have to do is create uh, the specific user pool. And that's all. The Lambda is going to adapt itself using the token of the user. And be, uh, depending on the token of the user, it is going to bring the, necess the necessary information of that tenant. So uh, here we are with um, with the multi-tenant application using the serverless approach. So if you have any question, uh, do not hesitate. It was an amazing presentation. I didn't even uh, know about uh, AWS. I've never used AWS, but for me, it was quite a nice uh, presentation. I learned a bit about uh, tenants and uh, AWS. Maybe you had something mm -hmm. to add uh, before we end? Also, uh, yeah, I would like if you could uh, provide some uh, contact info so that uh, if someone wants to add any question, they can contact you. Of course, they can uh, contact me uh, okay, right now on my email address. Uh, yes. I would say, um, wait. Let me just open it. Right? Hey, that's fine. This one is fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I, I guess that's all for us. Thank you very much for such an amazing uh, presentation. Uh, see you later. Thank you. Okay, thank you.